In the US, summer is for sand, sun, and blockbuster movies. And this summer, we're going to use those movies to learn English and study how to sound American. Every video this summer is going to be a study English with movies video. We'll pull scenes from the summer's hottest movies as well as favorite movies from years past. It's amazing what we can discover by studying even a small bit of English dialogue. We'll study how to understand movies, what makes Americans sound American, and of course, any interesting vocabulary, phrasal verbs, or idioms that come up in the scenes we study. I call this kind of exercise a Ben Franklin exercise. First, we'll watch the scene. Then, we'll do an in-depth analysis of what we hear together. This is going to be so much fun. Be sure to tell your friends and spread the word that all summer long, every Tuesday, we're studying English with movies here at Rachel's English. If you're new to my channel, click subscribe and don't forget the notification button. Let's get started. First, the scene. Situation? Lost toy, side yard. Billy, goat, gruff, raise the blinds. You have names? You never told me that. You never asked. Where is he? There. How do we reach him? Operation, Operation Pull, Pull Toy. Toy. Slink? You got it, Woody. Barbies. Go! Now, the analysis. Situation? What is the melody, the song of this word? If you had to just hum the tune of this word, what would you what would you hum? To me, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Very clearly, it goes up at the end. Situation. What does that mean at the end that it goes up? That means it's a question. She's asking for information. She's like, what's going on? Situation. It's very different than situation where the pitch goes down. That's a statement. Pitch goes up, makes it a question. Asking for information. Situation? 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 Lost toy, side yard. Lost toy, side yard. Okay, so he has a little bit of ugh in his voice because he's pulling himself up. But it's two little sentences put together into one thought group. Let's look at how he links everything together. First, the word lost and the word toy. Lost toy. Lost toy. Lost toy. Lost toy. He links them together with a single letter T, a true T. Any word that begins with a T that is a stressed word is going to be a true T. Toy, toy, toy. The exception is if it's in a TR cluster, then it might be CH, like the word train. But if it's just T, not in a cluster, it is going to be a true T if it starts a stressed word or syllable. Lost toy. Link those together with a single T. Try that. Lost toy. Lost toy. Lost toy. Lost toy. Side yard. Whoa. Different day, different outfit, important announcement. Did you know that with this video, I made a free audio lesson that you can download? In fact, I'm doing this for each one of the YouTube videos I'm making this summer, all 11 of the Learn English with Movies videos. So follow this link or find the link in the video description to get your free downloadable audio lesson. It's where you're going to train all of the things that you've learned about pronunciation in this video. Back to the lesson. Lost toy side yard. Okay, so no break. I put a period there, but there was no break. The oi diphthong goes right into the S, side yard. And the D goes right into Y. So there's no release of the D. If I did release it, if he did release it, it would sound like this. Side yard, side yard, side, side, side yard. But it's not that clear. It's side yard. So my tongue is in position for the D. I do vibrate the vocal cords. It's a voiced sound side yard. But rather than releasing the tongue tip down, I go right into the Y consonant. That helps the two words link together more smoothly. Side yard. Side yard. Side yard. Side yard. 
And the final D I don't even really hear. So I wouldn't say, I would also say it's no release. I think he does voice it side yard. It's just that it's a subtle sound and she starts speaking, the music starts, so we sort of lose it. But just know this is a common pronunciation for D, especially when it links into another consonant, is that we don't release it. Side yard, side yard, side yard. Side yard, side yard, side yard. If we were linking into a word that began with a vowel or diphthong, it would sound more released. Like if I was going to say the words side of together, it would sound like this side of riv, riv, riv. then the tongue is coming down. It is releasing into the vowel. But here we go right from the voice to D into the next consonant. Side yard, side yard, side yard. Billy, goat, gruff. Okay. So she calls her three sheep and each of them is its own little thought group of a stressed single syllable. What is the melody of that stressed syllable? Actually, I need to correct myself. It's not single. Billy is a two syllable word. Okay, but what is the shape of stress? Billy, goat, gruff. Billy, goat, gruff. Billy, goat, gruff. Billy, goat, gruff. Uh, uh. It's up, down. That is the shape of stress. Billy, goat. Gruff. And actually, I love that we have an opportunity here to talk about the fact that this word is two syllables, this word is one, this one is one, but they still all have the same shape because the second unstressed syllable here just falls into the same line of pitch. Billy. There's no skip, there's no change. I just change syllables as my voice continues to smoothly come down. Goat. Stop T. Gruff. So it's this little up down shape that makes a stressed syllable. And the unstressed syllable in Billy just falls into that same line. Really smoothly connected. Billy, goat, gruff. Billy, goat, gruff. Billy, goat, gruff. Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. What are our stressed words here? Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. Raise and blinds, both stressed, the word the, unstressed, but does connect in smoothly. So raise goes up, and as it comes down, we get the word the at the bottom before the voice goes back up for blinds. Raise the blinds. Uh, uh, uh. We're really talking a lot about intonation here. I just want you to be aware of how smooth all the words are when they link together. And also, what does a stressed syllable sound like? It has an up-down shape of stress. The unstressed syllables are lower in pitch, but they all connect into the same line without a skip. Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. Raise the blinds. Now, one last thing I want to talk about here is the D sound. So here, side yard, we linked right into the next consonant. We didn't release the D. Here, the D comes between two sounds, two consonant sounds, N and the Z sound, blinds. And she drops it. It's a common thing to do to drop T or D between two other consonants. Why do we do that? For smoothness to make things smooth. And we still totally get the meaning. No one would ever think, oh my goodness, she didn't make the D sound. It's just so natural. It's the way we speak. So do it that way too. It will make it more simple and you'll likely find it easier to say blinds, 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 very light, weak Z sound at the end. No D. Blinds, blinds, blinds. They have names? They have names? quieter. They have names. Intonation goes up again because it's a question. In this case, it's a yes, no question. They have, and the word have lower in pitch, but smoothly connects. I actually shouldn't write that with breaks. I don't want you to think there's any break. There's not. They have names. It sounds just the same way that a three syllable word would. It's a three syllable thought group made up of three separate one syllable words, but they all go together smoothly. We have names. We have names. We have names.
names. You never told me that. What are our stress words here? You never told me that. 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 Pitch goes up a little bit at the end. Why does the pitch go up here? It's not a question. True. I would say it's going up because it's a little bit of showing surprise, exasperation. You never told me that. It's like, whoa, hey, I can't believe that. So that's why I would say the intonation goes up a little bit at the end. You never, never, never flatter, lower in pitch. It's a valley compared to you and told you never told me that. And let's look at the D in told. Comes after an L, before an M, the two words linked together, so it comes between two consonants. Does he make a D sound? He never told me that. He never told me that. He never told me that. I don't hear it. Told me, told me, told me that, told me that. I believe it is dropped. When you study how Americans speak, you see how often we simplify things. And it's still clear because it's our habit. Everyone's on the same page with these simplifications. But wow, if you really tried to precisely and fully make every sound in American English, you can see how it would be so hard to do it and sound smooth and sound fluent. And so that is why we really need to study what Americans do because you probably weren't taught this in school. And this is where you can learn it so that you can see how Americans really are talking so that you can speak more easily and speak with more confidence, have more fluency and be more easily understood. He never told me that. He never told me that. He never told me that. And he does a stop T at the end of the word that, that. We usually do that with T's at the end of a thought group or also when they're followed by a word that begins with a consonant. He never told me that. He never told me that. He never told me that. You never asked. You never asked. You never asked. Asked, the most stressed syllable there. Stressed syllable of ne also has some of that shape. You never asked. You never asked. You never asked. Everything really smoothly linked together. Ooh, right into the N and the R, right into the vowel at. Never at. No break there. Nothing showing me it's a different word. Just smooth connection. You never asked. You never asked. You never asked. Now, what are the rules for ED endings? The rule is when the sound before is unvoiced, like this K, it's a T. So we have a single syllable, five letters, but just one syllable, the A vowel, S consonant, K consonant, T consonant. So we have a cluster here of three consonants. It's common to drop the K here. We've talked about dropping the D between two consonants. We also do that with the K. I can't say if we do it in every case, but I know we do it in this word a lot. So asked becomes asked asked. You never asked. Now, I do think I hear her doing a light K here. Asked. But that's not usual. Much more common to drop the K and just say asked. You never asked. You never asked. You never asked. You never asked. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? All linked together and we have a great reduction. First, what's our stressed word there? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Always look for the peak of pitch. So here it's the word is. Someone is missing. They want to know his location. Where is he? Where is he? The ending R links right into the I vowel, really smooth. Then with the word he, we have a reduction. The H is dropped. This is a really common reduction with he or him. The H is dropped and we just have the I vowel. Sorry, the E vowel. And that links right into the word before. Is is pronounced with a Z sound. So we have the Z sound right into the E vowel. Z, Z, Z. Where is he? 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 There. 
there, there. It's short, there's urgency in the voice, but I still get the sense of the up-down shape. There, there. It's certainly not there, 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 there. Flat, there, there, there. A little rounded word, a little hop. There, there, there. 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 How do we reach him? Okay, in this thought group, how do we reach him? What are our stressed words, our peak and pitch, our mountains in the melody? How do we reach him? 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 How and reach do we lower in pitch, connect in, in the valley, and him comes down off the end of reach as the pitch of the voice goes down. How do we reach him? all really smoothly connected. Now we already talked about the reduction of he, I mentioned we do this with him too. And look, here's an example. The H is dropped. It's just the I vowel and the M consonant. Now I want to say when we do this, when we drop the H, we always link the word on to the word before. So we go right from the CH sound to the I vowel, no break. If you did a break, the reduction wouldn't sound right. So chim, chim, reach him, reach him. How do we reach him? 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 Operation Pull Toy. Okay, Operation Pull Toy. What is the most stressed syllable or word there? Operation Pull Toy. Operation Pull Toy. Operation Pull Toy. We have some stress on the stressed syllable operation and then the most stress operation pull toy on the word pull and the word toy falls off in pitch as we come off of that peak for pull. Operation pull Pull toy. toy. Operation pull Pull toy. toy. Operation pull Pull toy. toy. Operation, first syllable stress. Now you see the letter O. I know my students can be very tempted to round their lips, say something like O, 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 but there's no lip rounding. It's not an O-like vowel, but it's the A vowel like in father. A, operation, operation pull toy. Operation, operation, operation Operation pull pull toy. Pull, this word can be tricky. P consonant, the vowel like what is in push, uh, and the L, pull. The L here is a dark L because it comes after the vowel in the syllable. And I don't really think you need to try to make the uh vowel, then a dark sound, then lift the tip for the L. Pull toy. When I do that, I really just make two sounds, the P sound and the dark sound for the dark L before I make the T. I don't lift my tongue tip. Pull toy. I lift it only to get in position for the T, which is a true T. Pull toy. Pull toy. Pull toy. Pull toy. Pull toy. So for the dark L, we make that not with the tongue tip. Tongue tip stays down, but we make it with the back of the tongue. Ol, 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 ol. Pull toy. Pull. See if you can work on the word pull by itself without lifting your tongue tip. It might be a really strong habit. Try to fight that. Try to make the ol sound with the back of your tongue. Pull. Pull toy. Operation pull toy. Operation pull toy. Operation Pull Toy. Operation Pull Pull Toy. Slink. 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 Pitch goes up. It's a question. He's like saying, are you there? Are you listening? So if someone says, Rachel, I know that they're wondering if it's me. They're wondering where I am. It's always a question when the pitch goes up like that. Slink. 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 You got it, Woody. You got it, Woody. All right. I love what's happening with the pitch here. You got it. The word you, the pitch is going up because the pitch is on got. And we want all of the pitch to be smoothly transitioning. You got it, Woody. And then we have another little bit of a 
mountain on the stress level wu. You got it, Woody. Got it. Got it. These two words link together with a flap T. This is how the D sounds in American English between vowels. And we link two words with a flap T or we make a T a flap T when it comes between two vowel sounds. Now here, the T is followed by a consonant. That's going to be a stop T. You got it. It, it, it's not it with a released T, but it's it with a stop T. My tongue goes into position or I cut off the air with my vocal cords. It, and that's a stop. You got it, Woody. You got it, Woody. You got it, Woody. You got it, Woody. Barbies. Go. Barbies. Barbies. The up down shape again. It's a single thought group. It's two syllables. The first syllable is stressed and the second syllable falls into the intonation as the voice goes down. Barbies. Now, this is different than slink, where the intonation went up. He was like, are you there? Are you paying attention? She's not asking anything. She is commanding. Barbies. So pitch goes down. It's a statement. Barbies. Go. Barbies. 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 So she's shouting go, intonation is higher, go, go, but it still has that up down shape, even though it's fast, it's not flat, go, 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 it still has that up down shape. I liked this scene because there were so many short thought groups and I feel like that really lets us focus in on that up down shape of what we want in a stressed syllable. Let's watch the whole scene one more time. Situation. Lost toy, side yard. Billy, goat, gruff, raise the blinds. You have names? You never told me that. You never asked. Where is he? There, how do we reach him? Operation Pull Toy. Slink. You got it, Woody. Barbies. Go. We're going to be doing a lot more of this kind of analysis together. What movie scenes would you like to see analyzed like this? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see all my Ben Franklin videos, click here. You'll also find the link in the video description. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English. If you want to see my absolute latest video, click here. If you're new to the channel, check out this Where to Start playlist. Click here to subscribe. I make new videos on American English every Tuesday. To be sure we can keep in touch, click here to sign up for my newsletter. You'll get free lessons in your inbox every week.